Hello! Today I'm discussing all the things added in DST's latest update chain, A New Reign. Charlie, Maxwell's former assistant, has taken over the Shadow Throne, and some things in the world are changing. This video will only quickly go over each thing added in A New Reign. Check out the wiki for more information. Beefalo domestication is a mechanic many players were looking forward to. You can domesticate the beefalo by keeping them well fed, brushing them, and attempting to ride them. Beefalo domestication is a high maintenance long term project that takes a lot of time and a lot of food. It's more of an end game thing. Once the beefalo is domesticated enough, you can use it as a mode of transport going at a fast 7 speed. The beefalo can acquire different traits which depend on how often you feed it, how often you ride it, and how much damage it takes and how much damage it deals. The traits will determine how much damage the beefalo does and how fast it is. Events were small changes to the game that appeared around Halloween, Christmas, and Chinese New Year. The in-game events added event skins you could use, and special items involving the real-life celebration. In Year of the Gobbler, the Chinese New Year equivalent, you could sacrifice berries to the Gobbler Gods and receive special goods in return. Winter's Feast, Don't Starve's version of Christmas, allowed you to plant a tree and sleep underneath it for a chance to receive presents. In the Halloween equivalent of Hallowed Nights, you could use special Halloween costumes for each character, based around a monster from the game. You could find special Halloween trinkets and trade into the Pig King for candies. Three new crafting tabs were added. All of these tabs are minor and not necessarily for survival, so they all share the same spot on the crafting roster. The first one, Critters, is used to adopt adorable little creatures. These guys will follow you around and adore you, but not really do much else. The Cartography tab enables you to make a map scroll and share your completed map with a newcomer of the server, for example. The third tab is called Sculpt and is used to create decorative works of art that you can use to decorate your base. Blueprints for more sculptures can be found by mining some marble sculptures found randomly throughout the world. These sculptures can be hammered on the new moon to fight special shadow chess piece bosses. These bosses at tier 3 drop a shadow atrium which you use to revive a stalker, which I will talk about later. Meteor showers were added into the game to make rocks renewable on worlds without caves enabled. You can also find moon rocks as well as the usual rocks, flint, nitre, and gold. Sandstorms appear in the special Antlion Desert, which spawns things like the Oasis and special cacti. All throughout summer, the sandstorm will rage on, making exploration and movement difficult. You can craft desert goggles from a blueprint found by fishing in the Oasis during summer. The good part about the sandstorm is that no smoldering happens inside of the sandstorm. This means you don't need to make ice lingomatics if you can get a pair of goggles for everyone. Disease appears after a while once you've replanted a plant. After a while, it will start to spread to nearby plants. You can prevent the disease by digging up the plant if the disease hasn't fully manifested yet, or you can use alternative sources of berries, grass and twigs. Twiggy trees, grass geckos and berry bush too won't get disease. The Moon Caller Staff event is triggered by placing a Star Caller Staff in the moon base. During the full moon, hounds and werepigs will spawn and attempt to destroy the moon base. You will have to fight them off. After 60 seconds, the transformation is over and the Star Caller Staff is now a Moon Caller Staff. The Moon Staff summons an endothermic style of light, which cools the player down instead of hitting them up, like the Star Caller Staff you also can't get through it. We also got a few new emotes to help express our joy, sadness, anger, frustration, role playing desires, or just to sit down and rest. The new emotes are slash sit and slash squat. Each of these commands has two different poses and the chance to get into them is random. Juicy berry bushes are an alternative to berries. They take long to grow but give you three berries instead of one. The juicy berries restore more hunger but they spoil extremely quickly. Your world will spoil with either berries or juicy berries but the other type can grow in via regrowth. Twiggy trees are the alternate source of twigs. They function just like trees, instead they give only one log, and a number of twigs depending on growth stage. They give more twigs and saplings, however they require more maintenance as you have to chop them, dig up their stumps and plant a new one. They are also immune to disease. Roses will spawn in the world and randomly replace regular flowers. They function exactly the same as normal flowers, except they take off one health when picked and have special character quotes. Their actual purpose was to show that Charlie was on the throne before any major changes had updated the world. Marble shrubs can be grown from a marble bean. They grow extremely slowly and only give you one to two marble when grown, but they are still useful because you can essentially double your marble supplies, with the only cost being time. This is great because it makes farming marble suits easy. You can also produce more sculptures to decorate your base. Succulents are small decorative plants that appear around the oasis during summer. 
They can be eaten to restore one health or used to make potted succulents, whose blueprint you get from fishing in the oasis. Spore caps appear during the toadstool boss fight. Their purpose is to produce light when fighting the toadstool and they also make an attack much faster. Chop them down so the toadstool becomes fightable again. They disappear once the boss is killed. Boom shrooms also appear during the uh, toadstool fight and the toadstool will spawn a ring of them, they'll grow and then explode. And you can generally tell when they explode so you can dodge them and then keep attacking with them. The second cactus functions identically to the normal pincushion cactus, even growing flowers in summer. Their only real purpose is to show which desert you're in once you first discover one, be it the alien desert or just the regular desert. The canary is a new type of bird. To get it to appear, build a friendly scarecrow on turves where crows normally appear, and all crows will instead be canaries. If you kill canaries, they only have a 5% chance to drop their saffron feather. If you want to obtain their feathers, put one inside a bird cage in the caves. After a while, the bird will become poisoned. When you take it outside, when this happens, it will fly away, leaving numerous saffron feathers. The saffron feathers can be used to make the electric dart, a weapon which does 90 damage by default, but if the target is wet, it does a massive 150 damage. Combined with water balloons, or when it's spring and raining, this weapon is deadly. The Uicus is possible to get at the end of a hunting trail instead of a Koalathan or Varg. It has two attacks, a, a kick, which is dodgeable by kiting, and spitting snot, Disgusting. at you, which traps you. This means that it's extremely difficult to fight the Uicus by yourself, so bring along some friends or hire pigmen to help you. It drops some steel wool upon death which you can use to make a beefalo rush. Grass Gecko is the alternate source to grass added, added in a new rain. They sit still basking in the sun and when approached run away, leaving their grass tails similar to some species of real life wood. They're generally better than grass tasks as they can't be diseased, don't need fertilizing, don't take as long to harvest, but they do need to be kept in a pen. If your well doesn't spawn with these guys, there is a 1% chance that picking a grass tuft will turn, turn it into a gecko, if there aren't already any around. Grass tusks can also randomly turn into geckos, however the chance for this is unknown. No idea, honestly I have no idea why they killed that, will spawn early autumn. They don't do much except drop some meat when killed and attack in herds. When winter starts, they will grow an antler. If they run into an object such as a tree, the antler will be dropped for you to pick up. Near the end of winter, they despawn de de unless near players. Their antlers are used to unlock the loot stash and begin the fight with Klaus. Klaus, in my opinion, is the most terrifying boss in all of Don't Starve. This thing really scares me and I don't know why. He spawns with two gem deer, however, however killing them is not how you're supposed to do the fight, and is unadvised because it makes him take 64% less damage, triples his health and increases his damage. His attacks are basic swipe attacks dodgeable by kiting, using his deer to perform magic spells, a double swipe attack, and rarely summoning two Krampi, Krampuses or whatever. After you kill him the first time, he gets resurrected and his chains will fall off. Now his stomach is a mouth. Fun! In the second stage, he'll perform his normal attacks as well as occasionally lunging at you with his stomach mouth. For all the bosses, I will provide a proper guide to fighting the bosses because this video only gives a short explanation on each one. Clicky clicky! Also, when this thing sleeps, he covers his eyes for some reason, which also severely creeps me out. The Bee Queen is another fight designed for multiple people. She will spawn grumble bees periodically, which makes her difficult to fight with just one person. She also occasionally swipes with her stinger, dealing 60 damage. She also leaves a trail of honey which will slow you down making it difficult to chase her. Once enough damage is dealt to her she will start to spawn more grumble bees more rapidly and occasionally do a screech attack which makes the bees faster and stronger. The screech also scares pigs so they aren't very useful for fighting her. Wearing a beekeeper hat helps as she, as she counts as a bee so her attacks will be much less damage. Clickety click. The antlion is the half boss half pig king. Feeding it certain things will suppress its wrath. If it's fed something bad or it's been long enough, it will spawn craters underneath you which will destroy your base, so be careful. In the caves, boulders will rain from the ceiling. If you choose to, you can fight it. To trigger the fight, give it an overheated, give it an overheated or frozen thermal stone. If you do this, it becomes annoyed and attempts to trap you with sandcastles. Spikes will occasionally come out of the ground, dealing damage. When killed, it drops the normal stuff you get from trading with it, along with some meat. Its sand spikes can be burnt with a torch to get special deco decoration items. Clicking time. The Shadow Pieces are a number of horrifying bosses spawned by hammering self-made sculptures on the new moon. Killing the correct ones near each other will upgrade them. Look here, it's pretty confusing. 
If the Shadow Rook teleports behind you and does a melee attack, the Bishop turns into a cloud of unavoidable Shadow Bats. The Knight, the most terrifying of the bunch, is however the easiest, performing only basic melee attacks that are extremely easy to dodge. The level 1 and 2 Clockworks drop some Nightmare Fuel, and the level, th level 3 ones drop Nightmare Fuel, the Dark Fighting Set, and the Shadow Atrium, and the Atrium is used to revive the reanimated skeleton. Click 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 click! The first form is seen by using a Shadow Atrium on, the, on a fossil skeleton assembled on the surface. It doesn't do much except walk around and make cave plants appear behind it. Oh yeah, and its arm falls off. The second stage is seen by reviving the skeleton in the caves. The caves version is more of a boss fight. It will use its head as a weapon, dodgeable by kiting, and, when its health is low, trap everything around it in bone cages which will wither away after a few seconds. The third form is the, pro is the proper boss fight. To summon it, kill a big tentacle, jump in the hole, and resurrect the skeleton in the atrium biome. This boss has numerous attacks. Its first few are the same as the caves version. Its first unique attack is summoning numerous woven shadows. These must be killed otherwise it'll eat them and regain 400 health. Its second attack is creating a force field around it, which can only be deactivated by killing the six unseen hands which appear around it. The hands can only be seen by insane players. Its third unique attack is mind control, which renders a, a random insane player frozen for a few seconds. This boss is extremely difficult when fighting alone, but still possible. It drops some incredibly powerful items, including the Shadow Thurible, which allows you to control the cave version of the boss, and the powerful Bone Armor, which can only withstand 16 hits, but can randomly block all damage from attack, and it can be refilled with Nightmare Fuel. Clicky Clicker 2! The Toadstool is a giant toad. It has 52,500 health, and summons exploding mushrooms which do 100 damage. It periodically grows spore caps around, which increases damage and produce light. It will periodically attach a spore bomb to a player too close to it, which provides light then explodes after a short period. It explodes into a spore cloud which damages players inside it and quickly spoils all perishable items in your inventory, making the handbat useless for fighting it. Clip. Hang on a sec. I'm out of cards. Check the description for the Toadstool Fighting Guide. Thanks for watching. Insert generic end card here. Social media. Subscribe!